All right, in this video audio recording, I'm going to show you a couple of verses in scripture that reference GMO foods. For those that don't know what GMO means, it means genetically modified organisms. In other words, a lot of the stuff you're consuming in these end times is being genetically altered. It's being spiked with all kinds of chemicals and poisons that are affecting your health and your mental state of mind. And these verses are addressing the people of the Creator Israel, okay, because that's who the Bible is for, by and large. And these Israelites that have been scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, a lot of them are in these Gentile, heathen, non-believing nations. And the non-believers, the heathen nations and people, uh, they don't care. They're going to keep eating the GMO foods, the GMO fruits the GMO vegetables and the GMO drinks because they have no regard for their sanity or for their health. Physically, mentally, they don't give a damn. They're going to keep eating this garbage until the nukes come and they get wiped off the face of the earth, all right? The Most High is not dealing with the majority of the heathen nations. In fact, he's going to destroy them. And he's only concerned with his people and some of those Gentiles, heathens, that want to want to change they want to forsake their wicked origins those that have been given an opportunity to change and are running the race a hey, good for them the door is open for them but for the most part the gentile nations the heathen nations non-believer nations they're getting destroyed all right so these verses are in regards to the people of the creator yasharel because these people are being deceived into eating this garbage that is killing them slowly and the reason for that is because they're not aware of what's going on. They are not aware that a lot of the stuff that they're consuming is destroying them, right? And that's part of our job is to help each other out, wake each other up. And yeah, the sooner people wake up, the better, right? So enough of the pre-talk. Let's take a look at those verses, shall we? Now, this here is Ezekiel chapter 4, verses 12 to 15. The passage is about a prophecy regarding the children of Israel. It states that the children of Israel would be scattered among the Gentile nations, and there they would eat defiled food or defiled bread, as it says here. Ezekiel 4.12 says that the prophet Ezekiel was given some sort of object lesson where he was commanded to make barley cakes baked with human excrement that is what dung is dung is basically crap doo doo bs feces etc ezekiel 4:13 the Most High stated that the children of Israel would eat defiled bread among the Gentiles where they would be driven to. And the reason the children of Israel would eat defiled bread is not because they were forced to. It's because they would pick up after the ways of the Gentiles after spending so much time around them. And we know that the Gentiles, they'll eat anything. They'll eat anything that the... Uh, Torah forbids. If you read the book of Leviticus, it gives you the breakdown on what is good to eat and what is not. The Gentiles, they are very big on pig, pork, swine. They are very big on bacon, ham, sausage, crab, shrimp, lobster. Pretty much everything the Levitical laws forbid they will consume and they will teach that it is okay to consume them they will teach that the law is done away that it is now okay to eat disgusting foods you could just pray over them even though it says in the new testament that the savior did not come to do away with the law but to fulfill it and that not one jot or tittle would pass away from the law until all things are fulfilled and we know that all things are not fulfilled yet so yeah in a sense also, the children of Israel would be eating a defiled gospel. They would be consuming and partaking of a defiled 
gospel with defiled teachings by the Gentiles. We are in the time of the Gentiles. They have been commissioned to an extent to preach the gospel. And we know that the Gentiles, they know nothing about scripture for the most part because the oracles of the Most High are given to his people. So only they could break down the higher knowledge of the scriptures, like the secrets, mysteries. So you're going to have a mess once you commission the Gentiles to teach with their limited knowledge. So the children of Israel are being influenced by the Gentiles into accepting a defiled gospel, into accepting the eating of unclean foods. So that's what it's stating here. Ezekiel 4.14 Ezekiel told the Most High, Lord God, behold, my soul has not been polluted. For from my youth up, even till now, have I not eaten of that which died of itself or is torn in pieces. Neither came there abominable flesh into my mouth. So here it says that abominable flesh did not enter the mouth of the prophet Ezekiel. And we know that the Gentiles, they are very big on abominable flesh, as I stated previously. They'll eat unclean meats, fruits, vegetables, drinks, you name it. And a lot of the Gentiles, they are genetically modifying the foods that their own people consume. So it goes to show you just how reprobate these Gentiles are, in a sense. Not all of them, but the majority of them, most of them. So yeah, they will teach you that it is okay to eat abominable flesh. And in your folly, your ignorance, you would believe them unless you look into the Torah yourself to see which foods are okay to eat and which are not. Ezekiel 4.15 Last verse to close the passage. The Most High told Ezekiel that if he does not want to use human excrement to bake the barley cakes with, then he can use cow excrement, cow poop, instead of human poop. So that Ezekiel would not be as disgusted when he bakes these barley cakes. So the Most High is reducing the disgustingness in the object lesson by allowing Ezekiel to use animal excrement instead of human excrement. He was instructed to prepare the bread that way. All right. So that's it for this passage. Let's take a look at another verse that references genetically modified organisms, GMO foods. As we just read here. This verse here is from Daniel chapter 1. Verse 8 states that Daniel purposed in his heart. That he would not defile himself. With the portion of the king's meat. Nor with the wine which he drank. So here states that the prophet Daniel. Made a decision in his heart. Not to partake of unclean meat. Or wine which is not well for one to drink, consume. And also in a spiritual sense, this could also refer to the king's meat, the king's teachings, probably teaching that it is okay to consume unclean foods and drink defiled drink, as it says here. So yeah, also wine. Is a reference to teachings. Meat is a reference to teachings. So Daniel purposed in his heart not to partake of any of the teachings that the king was pushing during the time of the Babylonian captivity of which the prophet Daniel partook of. So yeah, Daniel stuck to the Torah. He was not going to consume defiled teachings, unclean teachings, and unclean wine. So, as you can see, 
even back then, those in positions of power, those ruling, were consuming abominable meat and drink. Now, Psalms 141 and verse 4, it says, Incline not my heart to any evil thing, like breaking the fruit loss written in the Torah, like the Gentiles like to do and teach, that the fruit loss are done away with. All abominable flesh is now sanctified. Complete lies and utter bullcrap. It says here that the practices and wicked works of men that work iniquity. Another word for work iniquity would be lawlessness. Those that break the commandments in the Torah. Let me not eat of their dainties, it says. The foods the Gentiles consider delicious are nothing more than food that has been pumped with all kinds of hormones, sprayed with all kinds of chemicals. And of course, they prepare them well. They make them look good, taste good, even smell good. However, as I stated previously, you can put lipstick on a pig, it's still a pig. Not everything that looks, smells, and tastes good is good for you. Next verse, Proverbs chapter 23 verses 1, 2, 3. The first verse says, When you sit to eat with a ruler, consider diligently what is before thee. Next verse, put a knife to your throat if you are a man or woman that is given to appetite. So whenever you're being offered something to eat by somebody, always consider what is being offered to you. Because remember, there are clean foods and unclean foods according to the Levitical laws. And if you are somebody that is weak when it comes to food, if you have a weakness for food, if you're a gluttonous individual, then you need to really restrain yourself. Imagine somebody putting a knife to your throat or yourself putting a knife to your throat. Don't indulge and pig out. Hold yourself back. See what is being given to you. Because a lot of people are making their temples a grave for evil, unclean spirits by eating unclean foods. So always consider that fact before you indulge in whatever dainties you're being offered from other individuals. Because not everything you consume is good for you despite fact that it might taste well, smell good, and look good. As verse, be not desirous of his dainties, for they are deceitful meat. Exactly. The dainties of the Gentile nations are deceitful meat, unclean meat, steroid meat, all right? Genetically modified meat. So everything that you're eating, especially in these times we're living in, has been altered in some kind of way. Besides the fact that eating some of this garbage is already condemned according to the food loss in the Torah. Last verse, let's take a look at that. Last verse, it's from Hosea chapter 9 verse 3. This is concerning a prophecy about Ephraim, one of the English nations. If you watch my video on the truth about King James, the 1611 King James Bible, and the English nations, you'll see that indeed Ephraim is one of the English nations. It says in the prophecy that they would not dwell in the Lord's land, Israel, the land of Israel. But Ephraim would return to Egypt. Now keep in mind that at least a few thousand years have passed since the 12 tribes of Israel were in Egypt in bondage and 
at the time of Hosea, at the time that this prophecy is being recorded, Egypt as an empire had already came and went. So what Egypt is this referring to? It is referring to a modern day Egypt. You study the prophecies, you'll see that the United States of America is known as modern day Egypt. So it's saying here that Ephraim, the people of Ephraim, will return to bondage. They would return to captivity. They would return to slavery for their disobedience, for their rebellion. And they would eat unclean things in Assyria, it says. Also, the Assyrian captivity. A lot of the tribes of the northern kingdom, they went into captivity and a lot of them escaped and fled the Assyrian captivity and they went into the New World, also known as the Americas. If you read the book of 2nd Esdras, you'll understand this. So all this is tied. English nations, modern day Egypt, the United States of America is an English nation. Ephraim is one of the English nations. The Assyrian captivity, the 10 lost tribes of Israel fleeing to the Americas. You see, all this is tied together. And it is a prophecy that is being fulfilled as I speak in these end times. The people of Israel are in captivity. They are in bondage. They are eating unclean foods, unclean things. Things they picked up from the Gentiles being around them so damn much. And yeah. Just as it was foretold here in Hosea 9.3. So there you have it. Genetically modified organisms, foods. In Bible prophecy and in scripture.